こんにちはリンゴです今日はですねガウディの代表的な作品の一つである、えー、グエル公園に来ています、えー、今日は、えー、パパと一緒に来ていますこんにちは,にちは<笑>パパは、えー、と観光のプロなので今日はパパにグエル公園の中を案内してもらいたいと思いますそれでは行ってみましょうこんにちは、ボンナタルダ、オラ、ウィア、アウトサイド・パラグウェイ、ザ・ウェイ・グン・トゥ・ヴィゼット・ゲザー、This is one of the masterpieces by Antoni Gaudi。It's a little bit far away from the city。You can come here with public transportation。It takes about a half an hour from the city center。This is one of the、uh, World Heritage、uh, sites in Barcelona、designed by this genius who was Antoni Gaudi。Please come with me, we're going to visit together. We have just entered, and this monumental staircase gives you access to that hall with、uh, 100 columns.、Uh, here next to me, on your left hand side, you can see what is today a gift shop, but at the time it was the administration and reception house. And here on the left hand side, this was the guard's house, the gatekeeper who was living here with his、uh, family. This place,、uh, la, the Parkway, was a failed project. That means that it was supposed to be a place for 60 rich families, except for one person. Nobody else wanted to come here and live in this wonderful place. And on the left hand side, you can see that door. Those were the stables for the horses. You have to imagine all the vehicles and the carriages coming here, and through the, any of these two ramps, they could have access to the upper part where the houses and the villas would be. So here I am next to what the people call the salamander, and it is made with、uh, recycled pieces, as you can see. These are ceramic tiles, even this is the bottom of a bottle. This is something that was very unique in Gaudi. Reuse something, recycle something, think in a kind of green,、uh, but not today, but 100 years ago. Think that the entire park was built between the 1900 and the 1914. Now there is a pump, to, and、uh, the water comes out from here, but at the time, Only came out when under the columns there is a reservoir, and when it was full of water, the extra water, the overflow, was the mouth of the dragon. The name of the park is the Park Guell. Because Mr. Auzabi Guell was the person who commissioned the entire place to Antoni Gaudi. He was a, a very, very rich person. He was a very close friend. And up to five different works were commissioned by this person, Mr. Guell, to Antoni Gaudi. This was the summer house, the summer residence. This is today a public school. And here next to me, we have reached the 100. Column hall, but I have to tell that we have、uh, 86 columns. These、uh, columns, they are hollow, there is a kind of pipe, and you will see in a minute how in the upper part we have a huge terrace that at the time allowed the filtration of the water. When it rained, the water was filtered through the gravel and the sand. It was taken inside these columns and exists here underneath today a cistern of water, the reservoirs that would be used, part of the water that this place needed for the irrigation of the place. And remember, we have just seen that iguana, that animal with the mouth open, that was the、uh, overflow for the extra water when the cistern was full. So here we are under these medallions, and as you can see, in the center part there is a ring because the idea was at the time to hang oil lamps and to light this place. This could have been used as a ballroom, a marketplace, and these rings would be used、uh, for that.
So here we can see how Gaudi was not just an architect, but he would be kind of a structural engineer and also a landscaper. He was really a very innovative person and he created all these columns leaning as a system of aqueducts and viaduct. Aqueduct, because on the upper part you will see some places with a canal that would be used. The rainy water would be channeled through this canal and taken into the different reservoirs of water. But at the same time, it's a viaduct. Because, look, come with me, this lower part would be used for pedestrians and the upper part on top of this would be the road for the carriages or even the early automobile. And this is supporting aqueduct and the viaduct and creating this kind of wave. You can see it looks very organic, like a wave and very little motor it is needed because all the uh, stones are perfectly uh, put together, kept with the pressure to keep the entire arch. So here, from here, we can see the main entrance, remember, with the two buildings. To the right, you can see this spire with uh, a cross that is very interesting, that's a very innovative design by Antoni Gaudí, because this cross has not two arms, but four, two and two, like this. From any angle, you always see a cross. And at the distance, you can see Barcelona with the Mediterranean Sea. You can see the two towers in the distance. One is the Hotel Ars to the right, and the Mafra Tower with offices on, on the left. And behind the tower with the mushroom, there is La Sagrada Familia. So when Antonio Gaudi designed this place, this huge terrace, at the time, he planned to filter the water from the rain through this uh, sand and ground and through the gravel. And underneath, if you remember, we have the columns and there was a vaulted shape on top that took the water to the center of the columns into the system of waters. And here, next to me, you have these broken tiles and bottles. Everything is recycled with this technique called the trancadis. Look, this is a little uh, dish uh, for uh, coffee. And here, this bench is really very, very comfortable. When you sit down and you put your back and your lumbar part, you can see how it fits very well to this lower part because the way to do it so comfortable was a very logical way. He took a base of clay and he asked one of his assistants to sit down on the clay. When he sat down naked and stood up, the shape of his body was the shape of this lumbar part. These little holes would be used for collecting the water from the bench, taking it, and here behind there is a canal with, remember, the heads of lions that would be used to take out the water outside. Look at this, all this vegetation that was planted following Gaudi's indications. Of some of them, some of the vegetation is still original. Of course, the other has been replanted after his death. Uh, remember, this place was supposed to be a gated community, a residential area for these 60 rich families that never happened. Why? Because this place looks to be such a nice place. First of all, very expensive. Just the very high bourgeoisie, the wealthiest families could afford to live in a place that was supposed to have running water, electricity, imagine at the time, and even telephone. Second reason, the distance was really, really far away. The, the time it could take hours to come with the carriage or with the very early automobiles at the time to come from the city center to this place. It was really isolated. And the third element would be the fact that this place that is huge, remember 17 hectares, part of the land should have been divided into plots, into different properties. But there was one very strict rule that said only one sixth of your property can be used for your villa, for your house. 
So you cannot do whatever you want. You have to keep this ratio green area for your property. Remember that I told you before that just one person was interested in buying this wonderful place. That was the lawyer, Mr. Trias. And in fact, descendants of the lawyer are still living here. You can see the house is very beautiful. The house was not designed by Gaudi. And you can see the ratio, remember, one six of a property that would be about 1,200, 1,500 square meters, one six for the villa. All the rest, private property for gardens. La corrent l'agafa directament del mòbil amb un amb un fumigat. I així funcionarà molt millor segur. Sí, pots anar fent un instrument això. Here we are under one of these aqueducts and viaducts uh, for the pedestrians and there is here a more than centennial carob tree. This tree was saved by Gaudí. One of the stonemasons uh, was working here and asked the permission to Gaudí to cut it because they were working on these inclined columns. But Gaudí, what he did was to modify the original plan to change his drawings and plans in order to place it between the branches and to save it. You can see this uh, ecological green mentality that Antonio Gaudí had already at the time. <laughs> The house right behind me was the house where Gaudí was living the last 20 years of his life. Today is a house museum, but this building was not designed by Gaudí, but by his first uh, assistant, the architect uh, Barangué. And this was the model home to encourage the future owners to move and live in this uh, wonderful place. No one was interested, and finally the house was bought to his friend, Mr. Eusebi Guell, and was living initially with his father and later even uh, for a short period with one of his nieces.